I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yes, I am the God, your Savior. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the God, your healer. Well, I am the God, the only God that healeth thee, Miss Kathy and Mel. Yes, I am the Lord, your healer, Miss Luann. He sent his word and he healed your disease, Miss Connie. I am the Lord, your healer. Well, I am the God who healeth thee. I did it all on Calvary. I sent my word named Yeshua, and he healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer, Miss Yolinda. Can we really get a hold of this? As I sing, I read this morning, we have a precious sister named Chrissy, Chrissy Geller, who comes here quite often. And uh, she is facing a shot in her left eye. Uh, we need a healing this morning. And so please, let's sing it for Chrissy. I am the God that healeth Chrissy. I am the Lord her healer. I sent my word and I healed her disease. I am the Lord Chrissy's healer. Well, I am the Lord that healeth Sharon. I am the Lord, her healer. I sent my word and I healed Miss Sharon. I am the God, her healer. Yes, Joy, he is the God that healeth us. He did it all on Calvary. He cried, it is finished, Miss Donna. And now he is the Lord, your healer. Yes, he has already done it on Calvary. So let's get a hold of his word on this brand new day, May 20th. Yes, Lord, we believe, we believe. Oh, Lord, help any unbelief. We rebuke the spirit of unbelief today, and we embrace your finished. You cried it is finished. We embraced your finished word. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will sing ourselves happy. We will sing ourselves healed because it's already done. So let's just push our faith to the max, to the max this morning. Ah, Sharon says no sound yet, but we're singing to you, Miss Sharon. Sharon, 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 bring sound for our sister, Lord, cooped up in this bedroom. Yes, glory to God. Now, on this May 20th, we will dig right into 1 Samuel 26 and read on through 28, quite a portion. So we will get very busy going at it. Miss Sarah, good morning to you. And in this chapter, you can see bit by bit, little by little, here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, the Lord is bringing David forward strongly, and he is taking Saul. 
little bit at a time out of the picture and Saul is falling in many ways spiritually. So please get ready. 1 Samuel 26, 1. You ready? Now the Ziphites came to Saul, Shaul, at Gibeah, saying, Is David not hiding in the hill of Hachilah, opposite Jeshimon? And then Saul arose, and he went down to the wilderness of Zip, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Zip. And Saul encamped in the hill of Hachilah, which is opposite Jeshimon, by the road. But David stayed in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness, and David therefore sent out spies and understood that Shaul, Saul, had indeed come. So David arose and came to the place where Saul had encamped. Imagine that. David's getting bolder all the time. And David saw the place where Saul lay, and Abner, the son of Ner, the commander of his army. Now Saul lay within the camp with the people encamped all around him. Most protection he can find. And then David answered and said to Ahimelech the Hittite and to Abishai the son of Zeruiah, brother of Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul in the camp? That's a brave question, isn't it? And Abishai, maybe it's Abishai, said, I will go down with you. So David and Abishai came to the people by night. And there lay Saul, sleeping within the camp, with his spear stuck in the ground by his head. And Abner and the people lay all around him. And then Abishai said to David, God has delivered your enemy into your hand. Here we go with the hand again this day. Now, therefore, please... Let me strike him at once with the spear right to the earth, and I will not have to strike him a second time. But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who can stretch out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said, Furthermore, as the Lord lives, the Lord shall strike him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall go out to battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed, but please take now the spear and the jug of water that are by his head and let us go. So David took the spear and the jug of water by Saul's head, and they got away. And no man saw or knew it or awoke. And here's the reason. For they were all asleep because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen on them. So the Lord is working with David and Abishai. Now David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great distance being between them. And David called out to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Do you not answer, Abner? And then Abner answered and said, Who are you calling up to the king? So David said to Abner, Are you not a man? And who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not guarded your lord the king? For one of the people came in to destroy your lord the king. This thing that you have done is not good. 
as the Lord lives, you deserve to die. Oh, David is taunting him, isn't he? Because you have not guarded your master, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is and the jug of water that was by his head. And then Saul knew David's voice and said, Is that your voice, my son, David? Oh, don't you just love it? David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, Why does my lord thus pursue his servant? For what have I done? Or what evil is in my hand? Now, therefore, please let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the Lord has stirred you up against me, let him accept an offering. But if it is the children of men, may they be cursed before the Lord, for they have driven me out this day from sharing in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go, serve other gods. So now, do not let my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord, for the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea, as when one hunts a partridge in the mountains. And then Saul said, I have sinned. And we've heard him say this before. Return, my son, David, for I will harm you no more, because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Indeed, I have played the fool and erred <clears throat> exceedingly. And David answered and said, Here is the king's spear. Let one of the young men come over and get it. May the Lord repay every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered you into my hand today, but I would not stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. And indeed, as your life was valued much this day in my eyes, so let my life be valued much in the eyes of the Lord and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. And then Saul said to David, May you be blessed, my son David. You shall both do great things and also still prevail. Notice these words. So David went on his way and Saul returned to his place. What do you think his whole army is thinking? We came clear out here. David even came. And now we're all going back home. I can't believe it was building up the army. Any can you? All right. We move right along to chapter 27. 27 of First Sh Sham Shamuel. Hmm. Boy, I hope Scott's not listening. He needs to correct me, doesn't he? <laughs> and David said in his heart, Now I shall perish some day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape to the land of the Philistines, and Saul will despair of me to seek me any more in any part of Israel, so I shall escape out of his hand. And then David arose and went over with the 600 men who were with him to Ahish, the son of Meach, king of Gath. So David dwelt with Ahish at Gath, he and his men, each man with his household. How about that? And David with his two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the Carmelitess. Nabal's widow, and it was told Saul that David had fled to Gath, so he sought him no more. 
And then David said to Achish, If I have now found favor in your eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country that I may dwell there. For why should your servant dwell in the royal city with you? So Achish gave him Ziklag that day. Therefore Ziklag has belonged to the kings of Judah to this day. Now the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was one full year and four months. And David and his men went up and raided the Gersherites, the Gerizites, and the Amalekites, for those nations were the inhabitants of the land from of old as you go to shore, even as far as the land of Egypt. Whenever David attacked the land, he left neither man nor woman alive, but took away the sheep, the oxen, the donkeys, the camels, and the apparel, and returned and came to Achish. And then Achish would say, Where have you made a raid today? And David would say, Against the southern area of Judah, or against the southern area of the Jeremiahites, or against the southern area of the Kenites. And David would save neither man nor woman alive to bring news to Gath, saying, lest they should inform on us, saying, thus David did. And thus was his behavior all the time he dwelt in the country of the Philistines. So Achish believed David, saying, he has made his people Israel utterly abhor him. Therefore, he will be my servant forever. How about that? Really, Joy? <laughs> okay. Now we move right along to chapter 28. 28. Now it happened in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for war to fight with Israel. And Achish said to David, You assuredly know that you will go out with me to battle, you and your men. So David said to Achish, Surely you know what your servant can do. And Achish said to David, Therefore I will make you one of my chief guardians forever. Now Samuel had died, and all Israel had lamented for him and buried him in Ramah, in his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the spiritus out of the land. And then the Philistines gathered together and came and encamped at Shunem. So Saul gathered all Israel together, and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him either by dreams, or by Urim, or by the prophets. Silence from the Lord. And then Saul said to his servants, Find me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. He's the one that put them all out. And now in his desperation, look what he's doing. And his servants said to him, in fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes. And he went, and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, Please conduct a seance for me and bring up for me the one I shall name to you. And you know, all of this is not God. And then the woman said to him, Look, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the spiritus from the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? 
And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. And then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. So he said to her, What is his form? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Paul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed down. Now Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me and does not answer me any more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called you that you may reveal to me what I should do. And then Samuel said, So why do you ask me? Seeing the Lord has departed from you, and has become your enemy. And the Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me. For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, nor execute his fierce wrath upon Amalek, therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow, you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also deliver the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Immediately, Saul fell full length on the ground and was dreadfully afraid because of the words of Samuel, and there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no food all day or all night. And the woman came to Saul and saw that he was severely troubled and said to him, Look, your maidservant has obeyed your voice, and I have put my life in your hands and heeded the words which you spoke to me. Now, therefore, please heed also the voice of your maidservant, and let me set a piece of bread before you, and eat, that you may have strength when you go on your way. But he refused, and said, I will not eat. So his servants, together with the woman, urged him, and he heeded their voice. The man says something and then turns right around, does the opposite. Then he arose from the ground and sat on the bed. Now the woman had a fatted calf in the house, and she hastened to kill it. And she took flour and kneaded it and baked unleavened bread from it. So she brought it before Saul and his servants, and they ate and then they rose and went away that night. Wow. How about all that? We move, I'm not even going to comment. There's a lot. There's a lot I pray about and wonder about. We move right along to the beautiful Gospel of John, chapter 11. Chapter 11 of Yochanan, John. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet 
with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. And therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, and the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. And then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you are going there again? Good morning, Miss Jody. Nice to see your name, sister. Welcome. We are in John chapter 11, verse 9, Miss Jody. And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I might wake him up. And then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, <clears throat> Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought, that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. And then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. <clears throat> and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. And then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, so Thomas was convinced they weren't going to make it on this mission. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary, to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. And then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw 
that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. And then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And then the Jews said, See how he loved him? And some of them said, Could not this man, who opened the eyes of the blind, also have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he's been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with grave cloths, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. And then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did, believed on him, in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. And then the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, what shall we do? For this man works many signs. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. There's part of their reason. They were scared to death of the Romans. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and not that the whole nation should perish. Now this he did not say on his own authority, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation and not for that nation only, but also that he would gather together in one the children of God who were scattered abroad. And then from that day on, they plotted to put him to death. Therefore Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went from there 
into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim, and there remained with his disciples. Wow. Glory to God. Glory to God. Good morning, Byron. Nice to see you, brother. All right, we're moving along to a very short little psalm, Psalm 117. 117. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. The truth of the Lord endures forever. Oh, isn't that good news for all of us in this day and age? Praise the Lord. And we wrap up today's wonderful reading with Proverbs chapter 15, verses 22 and 23. Proverbs 15, 22 and 23. 23. Without counsel, plans go awry. That's worth saying again. Without counsel, plans can go awry. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season how good it is. In due season. Ah, that's the key, isn't it? To say it at the right time. Wow. And you need to seek the Lord, don't we? <laughs> to make sure we do that. Hallelujah. And make sure that they are His words. Glory to God. Well, aren't you blessed with the word? It was just for you written for you, God's love letter to us, his history accurately written for us, everything, counsel. We have had a little bit of everything that we need. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's wrap it up in prayer all together. And I pray that, that you would feel the unity of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we call out to you as we bring ourselves together, Lord, to come before Abba Father, to come before precious Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh, Father, we thank you for your wonderful word. Truly, what a great way to start our day, or later in the day, or in the night season, if that's when you are watching. Be blessed. Be blessed by God's word. Jesus, we want to thank you for all that you did. You did everything on the cross at Calvary. And you cried, it is finished. Lord, help us to believe that with no doubting. No doubting. Lord, strengthen us that we might be powerful in our words of prayer. Lord, once again, I hold up our sister Chrissy, and I proclaim, it is finished. We believe healing will flow into Chrissy's eye, both eyes, and she will be rid of this generational curse in Jesus' name. Father God, we hold up all who are sick, all who are sick. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would touch each and every one with healing this day. And Lord, particularly we ask that you touch your land, Israel, your people, the Jews who live within the land now. They've come to dwell on the land, even though it's dangerous. Lord, please, Heal them. Heal them. Draw them unto you, precious Lord Jesus. Holy Ghost, please bring peace to Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. Bring peace all over your land. And Lord, we believe that even in these trying times, 
You are bringing your people home. Nothing, nothing is going to stop your plan of bringing your people home now from the four corners of the earth. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Your mighty right hand of blessing is working every minute. Father, please give Bibi Netanyahu wisdom and the Knesset. Let them seek you today. Let them seek your will for your people. Father God, I hold up America to you. I hold up America. And I'd ask, Lord, that you would be so close, so close, that you would guide President Donald Trump, that you would protect him from all enemies and his family, and his family, Lord, all of the family. Please, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, all of Vice President Mike Pence, all of he and his family, and that you would use this administration, Lord, to bring your righteous ways. Give them wisdom. Give them wise counsel to know what to do now, Lord, to know how to handle awakening America and opening up their doors bravely. It's taking faith to do it. Lord, show them how to do it, when to do it. Be with every governor. Father, these governors that are overstepping, and it's, they're almost making cruel decisions. Not freedom, but cruel. Father God, come to them. Bring wise counsel to them. Soften their hearts. Father God, we'd ask that this day, this day, that no lady would go to an abortion clinic. Father God, hold all the ladies back. Hold them to run into loving arms who would help them, who would take them in, who would counsel them. Father God, it is my prayer that the innocent blood spilled in our land for all these years, that it would be totally stopped by your hand. We've seen how your mighty hand has sent everyone home all around the whole world. You can do whatever you want, Lord. We ask that there be this time here and now when this sin would be blotted out from our land and all the lands, all the countries of the earth. Your precious little ones, Lord, the next generation. Father God, I'd ask that you would hear the prayers of all of your sons and daughters who've come today, that you would hear their requests, you would hear their praises, their songs, their prayers unto you. Father God, we call out for your mercy and your grace. Help us, Lord, with the things that trouble us. Help us to take a strong stand against any sin in our life that we would call this day May 20th, a day of healing and deliverance for each one of us. It's our desire, Lord, to please you. It's our desire to love you more. It's our desire to love you more. Oh, Jesus, we declare our love. We declare our love love for you. Have a great day in the Lord, all God's children. Cry a hearty amen. I love you so. The Lord loves you. Come to him today with all your heart. He will bless you. Bye-bye.